This week at Bungie, a lot of you Guardians are seeing all red as Crimson Doubles goes on. Additionally, we had the return of the great Bungie Caper, once again losing our glimmer and having to go through an entire server reset to get our resources back. Thankfully, this time around, Bungie kind of figured things out. But we've also got some major news dropping in this week's issue of the Bungie Weekly Blog. In particular, some fantastic changes are coming to the Armor 2.0 system. You're not going to want to miss this stuff. What's going on, Guardians? My name is The Black Link, and we are here to cover this week's TWAP for the week of February 13th, 2020. Hope you Guardians have your Valentine's Day gifts ready for tomorrow. But for now, we've got some news to cover. Now, first things first, I want to take a moment to stand on top of this soapbox I've created to talk a bit about the format of the TWAB videos as well as update videos when we put some of those out moving over into the future. Basically, when I make these videos, I kind of try to mix in, you know, actual footage of the articles or the update patch notes and whatnot, you know, mixed in with gameplay footage so you guys don't get too bored. I kind of really hate doing that. I'm so tired of having to go through and put up just screenshots of articles. I think it's the most boring thing in the world. So I think from here on out, I'm probably going to focus a bit more on just raw gameplay rather than posting pictures of articles. Now, I know a lot of people probably think that's pretty boring too. The reason I do it is because when I used to make patch note videos, I would try to keep that to a minimum, but some people, you know, don't have a chance to sit back and listen to a YouTube video and they'd prefer to sit there and read things on the screen. So I try to put the things that I'm reading on the screen while I'm saying it. But like I said, I just find that to be the most boring thing in the world. And it's also a huge hassle when it comes to video creation. A little bit of behind the scenes stuff here. Basically going through and either taking snapshots of articles or like recording the articles makes the process like three times as long from start to finish. So I'm going to be moving back away from that. You know, of course, if there's something relevant to gameplay, I'll try to show that. So if like I'm covering patch notes or something and like Lord of Wolves has got to change, I'll try to have some footage of Lord of Wolves' actual change on screen. But basically, just to showing you guys the articles as I'm reading it, I'm going to be tampering back on that just a little bit and sticking more to gameplay. Maybe for my own sanity. We'll see how long it lasts. Let me know how you feel about that kind of stuff down in the comments section below. Hopefully the change doesn't bother you guys too much, but if it does, be sure to let me know. Now let's go ahead and dive into this week's TWAB. Like I said in the start of the video, uh, we started out with a bit of an oopsie daisy when the patch dropped. Of course, a lot of you recognized that your glimmer and some of your resources were taken away again. They did have to do a server rollback. We got all our stuff back and thankfully this time they identified the problem. So hopefully that won't be happening for a third time. But beyond that, the biggest question in the Bungie and Destiny community by far this week has come down to this. Donate or invest. What are you doing with your polarized fractal line? Of course, the Empyrean restoration effort is going on right now, the Empyrean Foundation. And we as a community have already blown past stage five. Billions of polarized fractal line have been donated thus far, and we've got a couple billion more to go before we hit stage seven. And while plenty of people have already donated their share, their 5,000 for the secret triumph and the emblem, a lot of people are holding on to their polarized fractal line and instead investing it. And what that means is basically rather than donating it to the Tower Obelisk, head to any of the other planetary obelisks, either on the Tangled Shore, the EDZ, Mars, or on Nessus, and utilize that polarized fractal line to level up those obelisks. Remember, the higher the level of your planetary obelisk, the more polarized fractal line you're going to get back once a week, every week until the Empyrean restoration effort is done. So rather than re-donating that polarized fractal line they're getting as a payout each week, a lot of Guardians are taking that and reinvesting it by using it to level up the planetary obelisk so that they get even more in the following weeks. A lot of people, a lot of really good people like Glad and whatnot are recommending that we do this right now. Invest, invest, invest. And then in the final weeks of the event, you're going to get a massive amount of polarized fractal line as a return. Then you can sit there for six hours donating it in stacks of 100. Doing this should grant everyone the largest return on investment, ensuring that we get to stage 7 in no time flat. Although whether you want to invest or donate right away, I think we're going to hit that goal before anybody realizes it. And at the time of this recording when the TWAB went live, we had donated a total of 3,536,099,600 polarized fractaline. That 
is an insane amount of gains. And there's certainly going to be way more where that came from. So keep your eyes peeled, keep completing those activities, and keep those stonks high, baby. But moving on from there, we've got some revolutionary information about the Armor 2.0 system. Next season, we've got some major changes coming to the way Elemental Affinity works, thank you Bungie, and even seasonal mods. Here's what the Twop had to say. When we introduced Armor 2.0 with Shadowkeep last fall, we got a lot of feedback on the new armor system specifically pertaining to elemental affinities. Many of you have been asking for the ability to change elemental affinity types on armor. We'll be adding the ability to do this starting next season. You'll soon be able to change the elemental affinity on any piece of armor to either of the two affinity types directly from the item's inspection screen by hovering your cursor over the armor's energy icon. This is intended to mitigate the experience of getting an armor drop with a stat roll you want, but the wrong elemental affinity. Changing an armor affinity type will cost one upgrade module. If your armor is already upgraded to a higher energy level, the cost will be the total upgrade materials necessary to reach that energy value plus one upgrade module. And that right there, Guardians, is a major change to the way the armor system works right now. And it's something that even I have been harping about since the Armor 2.0 system went into effect with the launch of Shadowkeep. I love Armor 2.0. I love that we got a revamp of so many different armor sets that can now work with different mods and the change to the mod system and all of that. But I absolutely hated the Elemental Affinity system. I think it's nonsense and it's so nonsensical with the way some of these armors work. You can get some well-rolled gear that you absolutely love but then kind of be screwed over because the Elemental Affinity on that bit of gear doesn't match the elemental affinity required for the mods for the weapon types that you use. Like if you need shotgun stuff, maybe you've got a solar helmet, but the shotgun mods that you need all require arc elemental affinity. It's been a huge problem. There's so many different examples of it. So I'm really happy to see that if they're not going to be getting rid of it entirely, which I mean, to be perfectly honest, I wouldn't have minded if they had just gotten rid of Elemental Affinity in its entirety and just let all mods be universal again. But if they're not going to be doing that, at least allowing us to change that Elemental Affinity by utilizing materials we already have in-game is definitely the next best thing. It made absolutely no sense, especially in the case with stuff like exotics, for you to get something like Arc Transversive Steps, but all the scavenger perks you need for the weapons you use are solar. I'm sure everybody's got their own crazy examples of this. It was a major drawback of the Armor 2.0 system, so I'm very happy they're finally addressing that here. But that's not where the armor changes end. We've also got some changes coming to seasonal mods. The article states that we've also received a lot of suggestions on how to improve seasonal mods. Starting next season, the seasonal armor mod socket, for example, Undying mods, Dawn mods, etc., will also be able to use mods released during the seasons before and after the armor piece was released. For example, armor with a mod socket from Season of Dawn can now equip Dawn mods, Undying mods from the Season of the Undying, and, of course, redacted mods from the Season of the Redacted. It's probably going to be worthy. Meaning that the armor sets, the exclusive armor sets that you can earn on the season pass track or just from se certain bits of seasonal content, right now I do believe it is the Righteous set. Those specific new armor sets that can equip those specialized mods, like it's the Charge with Light mods right now. Right now you can only equip the mods from the season that that armor set came from. But starting next season, all that seasonal gear, including the Righteous set, the seasonal gear from the season of the Undying, all of that is going to be able to equip all of the seasonal mods. So you'll be able to put Undying mods on there, you'll be able to put Season of Dawn mods on there, and Season of the Redacted mods. So basically, you're not going to have to pick and choose between different armor sets anymore to have those specific mods active. All of that seasonal gear is going to be able to equip all of the seasonal mods. Another fantastic change if you ask me. Really glad we're getting these super player friendly quality of life changes when it comes to Armor 2.0. This is the kind of stuff, well, I kind of would have loved to see when Shadowkeep came out, but I guess it's a learning experience and I'm glad that Bungie is evolving with the game. Definitely great news. 
But all right, that's it for the biggest bits of news. Of course, we do have Iron Banner returning next week. Starting on February 18th and going until the following week on the 25th, the Iron Banner and a Valor bonus are going to be in effect. This is going to be the final Iron Banner of the season, so if you haven't finished that Pinnacle quest, go ahead and get that thing done. They made it a lot easier with the quality of life patch we got a little while back. As usual, the game mode is going to be Iron Banner Control. Get in there, get your Pinnacle rewards, and uh, hopefully don't spend too much time getting salty. But alright Guardians, that is it for the biggest bits of news to drop in this week's issue of the Bungie Weekly Blog, This Week at Bungie. I am really excited about the Armor 2.0 changes that are going to be coming next week. I know I've got some decently stat rolled gear in my vault that I don't use because it doesn't have the elemental affinity for the kind of mods that I want to use. You guys know I'm a shotgun aper in PvP. So I'm super psyched to be able to swap that affinity and finally get some optimized builds. Mm, it's going to feel good to put that gear to work. But anyways, that's it for the news. Those are my thoughts. Be sure to leave me yours down in the comment section below. How do you feel about Armor 2.0 being changed up this way? Are you psyched about the change to seasonal mods? And what camp are you in when it comes to investing or donating your polarized fractaline? Be sure to let me know down in the comment section below. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to drop a like. Make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell to stay up to date with all the latest stuff we're putting out. I'm out for now. Thanks so much for watching. And as always, I'm the Black Link. You Guardians, stay frosty.